Welcome to Sense Talk. My name is Brandon, and I'm your host. Before we get started, please follow us on Twitter at Sense Talk underscore for a lot of updates of the games and, of course, breaking news. Before we get this video started, I would like to give a shout out to my friend Parker. Thank you for getting me this shirt as well. Um, hockey season is finally underway. It's October 1st. This month, we're going to have regular season hockey in the National Hockey League, so it's about time. And getting into this hockey season, let's start talking about my roster preview and the season preview. So this video is going to be the Sanders 2018 roster preview and season preview. So I, I've written down my preferred lines uh, the Sanders can put out on the ice with their current players that they have left in training camp. Um, uh, notable name, uh, names that were sent down were Schlappick, Brown, and Batherson including Wolanin as well, was sent down to Belleville. Um, but there are some surprises as well. Maxime Lejoie, he was an underrated prospect last year in Belleville, and this year he really excelled, and he looks like he's going to make the team. So now it's that last spot, the 6 seven spot on the defense, goes between uh, um, Harper and Christian Yarrow. So we're going to get to that in a minute. Let's talk about the forward lines first. Ryan Dezingle will be our first line left winger. Um... He's pretty underrated around the league, you know. He, I expect 45, 50 points out of him, and um, between 40 and 50, and I don't see how he cannot, I think he'll repeat another 20-goal season. He'll be centered by Matt Duchesne, and um, it'll be a storyline this season. Whether or not he'll be traded, we'll have to see. Um, hopefully, Sanders can get something done, but right now, he's centered in that first line. And then Bobby Ryan is the right wing on the first line as well. He had a solid, solid preseason, surprisingly. Had a hand injury. Luckily, he didn't miss any time. So he's okay. He'll start on the first line. That's what Boucher uh, rolled out in practice today. And I predict that Ryan would start on that first line. Because on the second line, fourth overall pick from last year, the Sanders, best prospect, Brady Kachuk, has made the team. He's a second line re left winger. He has looked really good in the preseason. Um, I think if he has a really solid season, has a shot at the Calder uh, Trophy you know, for the Rookie of the Year. And um, Boucher, uh, there are some, um, the Senators screwed around with this. They dropped Smith, obviously a money-cutting move. No one picked him up, so he's still on the team. Boucher has Smith penciled in in the top six on the second center position. That's awful, firstly. They have Colin White on the team. So Colin White should be, I penciled him, penciled him in second center, uh, second line center. Because firstly, you have Brady Kachuk, who is... Uh, a pretty good talent, so he has that help, and then he has Mark Stone, one of the best player, one of the best, if not the best player on this team, so that should really help White develop into the player that we drafted him to be. Um, having Smith there makes no sense, and if you're going to have White in the NHL, might as well be a top six um, position, if not, might as well just send down to the AHL and bring up Schlappick, who can produce well in the fourth, third line, and uh, like he did last season. And then, obviously, Mark Stone, second line right winger. Him, him and Ryan, I expect, might switch uh, in the season. We'll have to see. Uh, but Stone has um, chemistry with everybody, so he's fluent in the lineup. Third line. This is a speedy line here. Alex Formington has made the team once again out of camp. And you know what? If he can just finish after skating right past the defenseman, he's going to be he's gonna be very tough to defend against. Has definitely top five in the league for speed, and um, he just has to get that that has to get that his hands up with his skating abilities. Because if he can just finish the play, wow, this is we have got a player here. We got Kurt. We, this was um, the pick we got from the Curtis Zard trade. So, what that was one of the better trades Pierre Dorian has pulled off. Third line center here, Chris Turney. Um, you know he got him in the Eric Carlson trade. He got he put 40, 40 between forty and fifty points last year with San Jose. And, you know, he has some speed, he's a good center, and he can put the puck in the net. He's still young, so I like him on the third line. And, of course, from San Jose as well, from the Hoffman deal, Michael Bodker. He didn't really do anything in the preseason, but he is a veteran presence, and I would expect 35, 40 points out of him. Now, on the fourth line, Magnus Pajarvi. This is the fourth line here that can chip in occasionally. Magnus Pajarvi, he um, played pretty well in his short stint with Ottawa last year after being picked up on waivers. So I expect him to play well there. Uh, Zach Smith, will, in my opinion, should center the fourth line. He's not doesn't have as much offensive upside as he did a couple years ago when he scored 26 goals. So Payarvi, I expect 20. I expect all these players to get around 20 to 30 points. 30 points on the high end, 20 points in the where I expect it really. So Payarvi, 
He's a good penalty killer, has some speed, and has a little bit of offensive upside. Zach Smith, not much offensive upside. He's more of a defensive kind of player, more of a grinder. And Tom Pyatt, he, we know he has some speed. He has some good hands, so in the shootout, we might utilize that. But um, once again, that th- fourth line, I don't expect more than 30 points each, if that. It's going to be, they can chip in occasionally, but not like the first three lines. So I'm not expecting big things out of that fourth line. It's more of... Um, the shutdown line. And then Max McCormick is the extra because Brown and um, Batherson are getting minutes in AHL. Um, so McCormick, like I just said, he looked pretty good in the preseason, scored a couple goals, and I, I assume he'd switch in with Smith, uh, Formant, uh, Smith, Payarvi, or Pyatt. Uh, they'll do a rotation there depending on what Boucher likes. On here, here is where it gets interesting, the defense core. Uh, after Carlson, it gets a little interesting, and um, obviously left left defenseman Thomas Shabbat, best defenseman on the team. Right defenseman, some people will like this, some people won't. I have Chris Wyman penciled in, um, not Cody Cece. This is because Chris Wyman, firstly, he has shown that he can play well defensively, and secondly, he has offensive upside and he can run a power play, so I like to see Shabbat there, because Wyman's a two-way defenseman, so Shabbat can do his thing, and Wyman still can add an offensive presence while, while the top pairing is on there, the top Top six is likely out there too. That would help contribute for goals um, or offense in general. And Wyman as well as a two-way defenseman, he can get back. And Shabbat's a good skater as well. I like that. Second pairing, uh, Maxime Lajoie. Great puck mover. And uh, DeMello on the right D here. Uh, DeMello, he's a good presence in the back end. Same thing like the Wyman thing. Um, DeMello can skate up with the puck. He can pass the puck uh, well. But Lejoie has really, really good hockey sense and really good offensive instincts. So I love this pairing here. Um, it's very inexperienced. It's going to be a very young decor. But DeMello stays back while Lejoie does his thing. I like that. Third pairing, I have a two right-handed defenseman here. Christian Yaros, I have him making the team. He looks solid. He's ready for the NHL. He's a big body defenseman who uses his body and puts an offensive puts offense in the net as well. And plays good defense. He's NHL ready. He should make the team centered uh, well, next to Cody Ceci. Because Cody Ceci still should be in the top six. I have him penciled in the third pairing. I think the third pairing would be better for Cody Ceci. Just because, you know, he's it's difficult. It's, he's playing against the top guys uh, throughout the last few years in the top four. Top six might be better for him. He can go against players more of his caliber. Third, fourth liners, maybe second liners occasionally. So I think CC would be good there. Yaros uh, has a big presence, so I like that. And CC, he has looked okay in my opinion in the preseason. We'll have to see how he does in the regular season. But once again, I fully expect CC to be on the first pairing. But in my opinion, CC should be on the third, with Borieski being the extra guy rotating in for one of those two, bearing injury for others. Uh, I also left up in Harper, who's still technically on the active roster. Now, in my opinion, knowing the Senators, they'll send down Christian Yaros and they'll keep Harper, which is the wrong decision. Harper, he's not ready for the NHL. He's a big body, I guess, but he doesn't utilize that. He's not a competitor. He turns over the puck. He doesn't have any hockey sense, really. Uh, and he doesn't have any offensive upside. So he's really just a guy that can skate around and have a jersey on. He's not hes not ready for the NHL, in my opinion. He's, he seems like a nice guy, but that's not going to cut in the National Hockey League. I have him either being traded or waived in the next few days before Thursday's opener against Chicago. We'll see what happens there. Goaltenders, obviously, starter is Craig Anderson, who looked pretty impressive in the preseason this year. He had uh, over a 920 save percentage and a shutout uh, a couple nights ago against the Canadians, so he looked good. Same with Mike Condon. Sanders went 2-4-0 in the preseason, but um, two wins in a row in the last two. So Andy and Condon, um, you know, I'm okay with that tandem. Uh, we've seen Anderson at his best. We've seen him at his worst, like last year. Let's see him. I'm expecting something in the middle there. And Condon, I'm expecting a back bounce back season. Not like elite numbers, but at least uh, around average. Now let's get to what I my preview for the season in general. Now what do I expect out of the team this season? A lot of people criticizing the Senators, thinking they're going to be bottom in the league going into the season, I could see why, you know, a lot of things are on the downturn, they just lost generational talent in Carlson, they just lost one of their best forwards in Hoffman, I get it, but there's something here that is missing, uh, that people are missing from this equation, all the Sanders need to get, to be better than the 67 points they put up last season, is at least average goaltending from Craig Anderson and Mike Condon, 
Average goaltending always masks how bad your team is. And I don't care how bad your team is. If the Senators at least get average goaltending or above average goaltending, they will be better than last in the league. And that's just an obvious. When you have a veteran goaltender like Craig Anderson and a, a goaltender in Mike Conan who can surprise, I don't see why the Senators can't do better this season than last season. And I'll tell you why right here. Firstly, you just got rid of the Carlson drama and the Hoffman drama. The Senators locker room has... Uh, much like a weight lifted off their shoulders. They have young prospects like Kachuk, Formanton, Lajoie, Yaros, and they have guys like Brown who can come up, they have Batherson who can come up, etc., even Schlappick or Walainen. They have some guys that can pump in and add some youth into the roster. They also have some good veterans. They got Matt Duchesne, they got Mark Stone, and then they, they also have Chris Turney, who's an underrated center. You know, he can he put up a decent season last year. I don't know I don't see why he can't again. I think people say the Sanders blue line is weak. It is very inexperienced and very young. But I think this blue line can't surprise because Lajoie looked good in the preseason. Yarrow is looks NHL ready. And then you got, you know, uh, not Harper, sorry, you got CeCe, who if he's on the third pairing and played right can do well. Wideman is underrated. And he has offensive upside. Shabbat can carry the play. He has time. He still needs to develop. But overall, this team is not a playoff team. This team is not a playoff team. But I think the Sanders can finish between 78 and 85 points. Around 30 to 35 wins, in my opinion. Um, that's... The only way that happens, though, is if the Sanders get the goaltending, at least average goaltending, or a little bit below average, I think the Sanders can get to this mark. Because whenever you have good goaltending, that covers up a lot of mistakes. Last season, the goaltending didn't cover up any mistakes. But the goaltending can't be as bad as last year this season. So I'm, I'm expecting the Sanders goaltending situation to be much better. Now, for forwards, when you have Mark Stone and Matt Duchesne with Ryan Dezingle, and you have Kachuk and Formington, there is a decent top six there. Even Bobby Ryan, if he chips in, that's good right there. The third line with Turney and um, Bodker and Formington that's a speedy line, and they can surprise. And then the fourth line can chip in. I think this team throughout is more of a team, not just, um, and it's less drama than just, you know, Eric Carlson does this, Eric Carlson does that. The reason we don't make the playoffs is because of Eric Carlson. Eric Carlson is a huge loss to this team, and the fact we traded him is the dumbest decision this team has ever made. But be going beyond that, this team is still not in as bad shape as people give it. It's an easy team to pick right now with all the Melnick stuff, deservingly so, Melnick out. But uh, with all the Melnick situation and, you know, with um, the, the Carlson situation, the Hoffman situation, all, every other situation surrounding this team, the standards are being underrated. And whenever the standards are underrated, they always exceed expectations. 2014-15, uh, even before then, the pesky sense. 2013, when they went to the second round against the Pens, etc., etc., etc. The Sanders, when they're at, whenever they're underrated, they always find a way to overachieve or at least um, go beyond expectations. I fully expect that to happen again this year. And we'll have to see what happens. Hockey season is in four days. I can't wait. We'll have a video, obviously, after that game against the Chicago Blackhawks. And uh, we have some news that we'll, up, uh, we'll speak about in the next couple days regarding a new sponsor. So we'll keep you updated there. Besides that, thank you for watching. So please follow us on Twitter at Sensetalk underscore. For live to updates to the games and, of course, breaking news. Please like us on Facebook at Sensetalk. Add us to circles on Google Plus Sensetalk. Click the big red button down there and subscribe to us. Like the video. Share the video wherever you share cool stuff. Please, please, please click the big red button down there and subscribe to us. And besides that, right here, 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 and here, you can subscribe to us. We have playlists and our most recent upload. Besides that, that's our season preview and roster preview. And I'll see you in the next one when the Sanders take on the Chicago Blackhawks in the season opener. I'll see you then. Go, Sins, go.